And okay, so we have been to two different locations today. <laughs> yeah. And we found a really interesting variety of finds and some quite yeah. some In really, really interesting yeah, things. Yeah. Um, so come on, let's, let's do, do it. it. day today even though it's um it's still winter time um but i have found my first finds down here just behind me the first thing i found today was this plant pot of course we collect these to well put plants in <laughs> i've got loads of succulents so i'm always looking for pots um i also found a really creepy little like I don't know, cellulose, celluloid hand, arm? It's a bit creepy. Yeah, look, it's a little hand or a paw or something. Yeah, I found that anyway. And a little doll's lid as well. But I've also spotted something else down here. Um, and I think it was jewellery. Can you see here? The little... There's, there's like brass, some sort of copper alloy that's disintegrated. And look, little gems. That one's broken. There's one there. And there's also a little gem there as well. So it looks like some article of jewellery has been thrown out. So I'm going to actually take some of these little gems that aren't broken. Because I can use these. That one there is shattered. Little one there, look. Oh no. Right, I'll have to put the, turn the camera off so I can pick them up. There you go, look at that. Got a few of them. I think some of them might be broken, but there's a few whole ones there that I might be able to recycle into a new bit of jewellery in the future. That's cool. Right, so I thought about scraping back some of this dead foliage and I found a few bottle stops, look. But up here... I scrape some down and look. It looks like a little blue bottle. Is it blue? Is it whole? It's whole. Oh, it's so cute. Look at that. Cobalt blue. It's got nothing on it, but it's not damaged or anything. It's complete. Oh, ain't that cute? Cute little blue bottle. I mean, we love tiny bottles, but you don't so often find the blue ones. Than the clear ones or aqua coloured ones, so that's brilliant. I love that. Over here, this must be the biggest doll's head I've ever found, but most of it's missing. <laughs> it's just the shoulders. Oh, what a shame. Even if the bits were here, I could have put it back together, but no. But, I don't know, I might take that because that would make a really strange um, planter. Put in a plant pot. So yeah, massive doll's head. Found some discoveries down here. Um, this teapot lid, which is in um, absolutely fantastic condition, not got any chips on it or anything and they fit perfectly on top of marmalade jars which mum found out <laughs> quite a while ago so we always take them if they're in tip-top condition we also found this bottle it's broken so it won't be coming with us but it's worth seeing what was written on it let's have a look a soyuz bron bronchial bronchan soyuz Bronchial, I've not heard that word before. Bronchial cough mixture. It's another cough cure. It's a quack, a quack medicine. And the cough cures that are still sold today are, in fact, still quack medicines. 
there's no evidence that they actually do anything for your cough at all. So, um, yeah, they were quacks back then and they're still quacks now. So down here, I don't know if you can spot it, is a sheep's knuckle bone. And this is what the original game of knuckle bones would have been played with. Jacks, alley gobs, you know, the little squares we find with the ribbed edges. They all started with these. The original knuckle bone. So I wonder if this was used for that purpose. Looks like a plain pipe bowl. Might be able to use it for something though. What's this down here? Oh, it's a lid. Oh, that's an unusual lid. Is it a doll's lid or is it off a condiment of some sort? I've not seen one like that with that lip on it. Well, that's really interesting. I like it. Oh, it looks like we've got something down here. Yeah, what is it? To try and get it out with one hand. <laughs> Looks like stoneware, but is it whole? Oh wait, what's that? Oh, it's a little shell. Is it whole? Oh, it's quite a bit of resistance. Oh, is it ink? Is it a blacking pot? Oh, it's, it's an ink. ink. Oh, oh, it's chipped. <laughs> the spout's oh, chipped. No. Oh, that's a shame. It's, m it's mostly whole. Mostly whole. It's got a maker on there, is it? Oh yeah. Uh, Born Denby. Born Denby, yeah. that's what they usually are. Aye. We'll leave them up there for now. Do some more. And it looks like there's a pipe bowl down here. What's that? Melted glass. It's a plain one. It's alright condition, so I'll take it. Anything down here? Get right at the bottom of the hole and look around. <laughs> I don't think so. Oh no! <laughs> there is! I thought that was... I. You know what? I was convinced that was just going to be broken. It's a um, Valentine's meat juice bottle. We haven't found one of these in ages. Yeah, look. Valentine's meat juice. And it's in perfect condition. Would you look at that? That's cool. Just sitting down here. See the lip just sticking out there? I thought it was just going to be a neck. Oh, that's cool. we got another whole thing down here. Look at this. It's a complete dish. Well, it looks like a saucer. A saucer, yeah. But has it got a pattern on it? It's probably just plain. Even if it is plain, though, it's great for pudding. Look, where's my plant pot? We can keep our plant pots on top of them. Would you look at that? <laughs> So I can put my plant in there and I've got a dish to keep it on in the house. So you can't lose. Win-win. Win-win situation. Has it got out on it? Yeah, it's got a crack. A crack. Oh well, we'll, we'll overlook that bit. There you go. We'll keep it though. A clay marble. Always nice to find. Although I would quite like to find one with a pattern on it. They're usually always plain. Okay, so I finally just made my way out of a hole down there. <sighs> I got stuck in a rose bush. <sighs> but I did find this bottle. <laughs> um, and it's something that we have not found in absolute years. And it is a Mrs. Winslow's soothing syrup. And this was a teething... Um, syrup for babies and toddlers and it's actually nicknamed the baby killer because an untold amount of children died consuming this i can't exactly remember what was in it something like chloroform and laudanum things like that um this bottle is actually i think slightly later to the one that to the the other one that we found years ago slightly later one because it says um, proprietors on it um, so that's really cool and a really grim bottle with a really grim history 
We've talked about Mrs. Winslow's soothing syrup before in one of our early videos, but finding this bottle has made us want to retell this important story with some additional research. Mrs. Winslow's soothing syrup was a patent medicine targeted at the mothers of teething children, promising to relieve the poor little sufferers immediately and give rest to the mother. But behind the beautifully illustrated advertising and hopes of happy children and rested parents, there lurks a very dark and disturbing reality. Mrs. Winslow was Charlotte Wood Newman Noyes, who was born in Gorham, Maine, USA in 1789. In 1804, at the age of just 15, she married 31-year-old farmer Joseph Winslow. They had five children, one of them being Lucy Wood Winslow, who married Jeremiah Curtis in 1829. Curtis claimed that in 1844, Mrs. Winslow gave him the recipe and full permission for him to produce and sell the syrup using her name as his trademark, and that in 1845, he went into partnership with Benjamin A. Perkins as Curtis and Perkins, and from that date began producing and selling Mrs. Winslow's soothing syrup. Curtis and Perkins were extremely successful in their venture and in just six years had cornered the market, selling thousands of bottles a year all over America. But already alarming articles were appearing in medical journals, warning of the dangers of the syrup. An 1851 article states that Mrs. Winslow's soothing syrup contained one grain of the opiate morphine per ounce of the liquid. So the dose for a baby of three months was the equivalent of giving it 10 drops of laudanum every two hours. This at a time when it was known that only one and a half drops of laudanum could be fatal to babies. Maybe because his conscience got the better of him, Benjamin Perkins left the partnership in 1855 and remained in Maine where he went into the wholesale drug business with his brother. Curtis moved to New York City, where he took his sons, George Newman Curtis and Jeremiah Winslow Curtis, into partnership, forming Jeremiah Curtis and Sons, who, by 1868, were selling over 1.5 million bottles of Mrs. Winslow's soothing syrup a year worldwide, making Curtis an extremely rich man. In 1888, it was estimated that 150,000 babies a year died as a result of being given Mrs. Winslow's soothing syrup. So, if you only count the years between 1860 and 1906, when the syrup was in its heyday, that equates to 6,900,000 deaths. If you then counted in the deaths from the rest of the world, the numbers would be unimaginable. Of course, these are only estimates, but even if these estimates were halved or even quartered, it would mean that Jeremiah Curtis and his sons were responsible for the deaths of more children than in both world wars combined. In no way do we put any blame onto the parents of these poor children. Despite the mixture being widely condemned amongst medical professionals, the public, it seems, were largely kept in the dark. The only warning we could find in British newspapers was this article titled Baby Killers, published in 1911, five years after legislation had already forced them to remove the morphine from their product. Too little, too late. The article only appeared once in just two newspapers, as opposed to the deadly syrup being advertised over 161,000 times between the years 1850 and 1950. And this was just in British newspapers. Many thousands of advertisements appeared in almanacs, catalogues, magazines, posters and even in books such as the complete works of Shakespeare. As for the part Mrs. Winslow played in all of this? In 1864, an advertisement in the guise of an article appeared in the New York Times asking, Who is Mrs. Winslow? To which Curtis answers, 
She is a lady who, for upward of 30 years, has untiringly devoted her time and talents as a female physician and nurse, principally amongst children. She has especially studied the constitution and wants of this numerous class, and as a result of this effort and practical knowledge obtained in a lifetime spent as a nurse and physician, she has compounded a soothing syrup for children teething. We, Curtis and Perkins, think Mrs. Winslow has immortalised her name by this invaluable article, and we sincerely believe that thousands of children have been saved from an early grave by its timely use, and that millions yet unborn will share its benefits and unite in calling her blessed. Although Curtis refers to her in the present tense, poor Charlotte Winslow had been dead for 14 years by the time this was written, and we highly suspect that she had little or no knowledge of the formula which was most likely the concoction of Curtis himself. In 1883, Jeremiah Curtis died an extremely wealthy man. Interestingly, in his obituary, there was no mention of Mrs. Winslow's soothing syrup or indeed of him ever having been a druggist, or of making his fortune from the suffering and deaths of millions of babies, or of the parents he exploited by appealing to their desperation. No, Jeremiah Curtis was said to have made his fortune through the railways and banking, and to have been a brilliant conversationalist and genial host whose home in the city became a centre for artists, poets and literary men of all classes. He was a member of the Madison Avenue Baptist Church and gave liberally to charity. And today, Jeremiah Curtis's headstone stands in Woodlawn Cemetery, Bronx County, New York, a shameful testament to his legacy. Okay, so we've resorted to digging and we have just come upon our first bottle and we think it's either a flask, a flask or maybe like a baby's feeding bottle or something, but it looks flasky, doesn't yeah. it? So we've got the trowel and we're going to try and get it out. Yeah, so. let's bring you down here. Okay, you can see it just sticking out there, look. Let's hope the remains of a cork there, look, just dug a bit of it yeah, out. Let's hope it's full yeah. to start whatever it is. Well, it's fresh ground. You can tell because it's really... It's not been dug before. It's sitting on top of clay here, look. Let's see, I hope it's whole. Suspense is killing me. Is it a... Fl oh, it's not looking flasky, actually. It's looking... No. Duh, I don't know. Disinfectant bodily. Yeah. Let's give it a wee wiggle. Oh, yeah, it's a big chemist bottle. It's like, yeah, yeah, big old chemist bottle. Look, still got its cork in. I mean, it's complete though, which yeah. is a good sign. That means this, we might find some something else down here. Actually, I think it had a hole. Like, yeah, it's something. had like some sort of spout in yeah. there or something. Yeah, some some kind of chemist bottle, maybe like cod liver oil or something like that. Yeah. Well, let's, let's keep digging. Okay, we got a bottom of a bottle here. Then it looks like it's embossed. So what is it, a beer bottle? A aerated water, something like that. Or a chemist bottle or a I think it's, sauce bottle. It's got embossing on it. I think it might have a local um, name on it or something. <laughs> when you dig it with a trowel, it, is, it makes it more suspenseful, doesn't it? very hard ground this. Okay, so I think they're like, they've got a wiggle going on here, look. The lip's stuck. Oh! oh. Yeah, look at that. What does it say? What does it, it says... Mackay. Mackay. Mackay Limited. Is that it? Mackay Limited? Oh. 
Newcastle. Newcastle. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so it says Newcastle Mackay Limited. Um, and it looks like a it's beer. A crown top. Yeah, look, it's a crown top. Well then. I think we'll be keeping that. I think we'll be keeping hold of that. Yeah, it's probably just the manufacture um, marks, but yeah. hey, that's cool, isn't it? Yeah, something to look up. Something to look up, definitely. Mm -hmm. We've got a Mackay Newcastle. I don't think we've found one of those before, whatever it is. Oh, I don't recognise it. Probably a beer. Okay, so we've got another bottle down here. What's going on here? Oh, sauce. sauce, yeah. Looks like we've got a sauce. The oh, cracked like teacup. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah, it's a Holbrook. Holbrook and Co. Sauce. Sauce bottle. It's a nice colour, but. Yeah, we'll I think. Else. Yeah, we'll leave that one behind. We've got a bottle down here. And. I can't hold the camera and dig at the same time, so I'll put you down there and I'll see if I can dig it out while the camera's rolling. The ground is extremely compact. Let it not be another sauce box. Oh, it's broken. Oh. And plain. It's broken and plain. Oh well. Okay, so digging way down here, and I can't believe I spot this. I'll zoom right into it. Look, it's a tiny little ring with a flower on it. It's so delicate. Look that at that. That is so sweet. Isn't it cute? It's like a little, um, little child's. Trials, yeah, it's just like made out of um, some kind of lead alloy, lead alloy like tin. tin yeah. yeah, look, it's tiny. That is so cute. I can't believe I just spot that. Let's hope it doesn't break into a million pieces because it's very delicate. Bottle down here, just wiggled it. It's come loose. Oh no. Is it plain again? Mm, no, be plain. No, oh, it is. It's a plain beer. Oh, uh, well. But I've got the corner of the bottle here, look. It's probably plain as well, but you never know. That's the fun of it. No, it's not. It's a lung tonic. Ah, oh, good old lung, to lung tonic. Lung. Our bridges, hull. Uh -huh. Look at that, our bridge. Um, and it's it's in good nick and everything, but we've got plenty of these back at home, so we'll be leaving that here too. So I found this. I think that is a very dirty looking German marble. Not sure about the condition. It might be a bit knackered, but we'll see. And this plain pipe bowl. does I think it's just one of those knobbly ones it's a knobbly pipe bowl that's cool it's a bottle here and it has BW and Co London which I'm guessing is Burroughs welcome I said brothers on the last video but it's not it's Burroughs <laughs> got mixed up but yeah we find quite a lot of these they usually had pills in them Ah, oh, what a shame. Look at that. It's got the corners missing. 
you know what, I'm going to take that. I'm wondering if I could mend that with milliput. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to take that. That's gorgeous. Okay, so new day, new dump. Um, and my first find is this pipe bowl, which is a basket reef pipe bowl, but it's macadelic. Yeah, so I'm going to leave that there someone else and actually down here is where I found that amazing incredible morning necklace and I've been scratching around but it's quite difficult because it's amongst all these twigs my scrapey thing keeps getting caught look oh there's no sign of anything else anyway And down here is a back of a doll's neck and there's two pipe bowls. This is a plain one, but it's chipped so I don't want it. And there's another hand pipe. I think it's the red hand of Ulster. So yeah, that's a bit chipped too, so I'm gonna leave that. What's this? Oh, it's all, it's all bust up. Were they the feet? It's cute, but it's too broken. And there's a nice bottle here, but we're trying not to take bottles because we have thousands of them and we've really got to stop. So yeah, might leave that for someone else as well. But down here is a comb, a knit comb. And it could very well have been made, could be made of vulcanized rubber because they made these combs and they actually made them um, in Scotland and England to be exported to America for the soldiers in the American Civil War. They were made by the same people who made the vulcanite jewellery. So I'm not sure if that's vulcanite. It might be. I'll have to look at the name on there closer but I might take that something down here it looks like a little lead toy a lead does, alloy yeah. toy isn't it it's a little parcel oh it is oh it's not got a bare bottom look at all <laughs> what's that oh it's a pity it's so uh, oh corroded. it's a little boy oh spending a penny it's a little boy having a wee. having a wee yeah that was a popular motif yeah, back then we've got a china one of those yeah we do People seem to like them the, yeah i actually have a little silver charm that's a little boy having a wee as well which is a bit yeah, strange it's a bit strange, a bit strange. To be yeah um but yeah i i guess it's interesting i think mum just filmed these but i collected them up and put them in a pile it's just to show all the pipe bowls that we leave behind this is just a few and we've got a wooden one here. This is probably Lignum Vitae. Um, there's a golf one here and we've got a few golf ones, but this one's got a chip out of the lip. And there's a hand one and some more hand ones. So we've left them here for others passing through. This little doll's cup there. Oh no. That would have been a really cute one there, look. Actually, I think that's a bit of it inside. Oh. That would have been a cute one. It's broken though, look. Shame. I'll put it over there with the pile of things. Just in case someone comes along and wants to take it. Oh, oh. getting caught. There. Someone might want to take that and fix up. Down here is a, a pot. Could have had any number of things in cosmetics, it could have been meat paste, fish paste, caviar. I know Fortnum and Masons did caviar dishes like this. Here's another one that's very shallow, that would have had ointment in it, but it's very cracked up. But I quite like this one, it doesn't seem to have any cracks or dings in it, so I'm going to take it. Now, it was the weekend yesterday, so it's been yeah, there's been some fresh digging. I just saw that, a bottle stop. Oh, what's that have on there? There's something on there. 
and a pipe ball. Oh, unfortunately, it's a hand pipe ball. We think these might be the red hand of Ulster, um, which of course is Irish, but um, we're not sure what that would be doing in Scotland, unless they were made for the many navvies that came over in the 19th century. That's one theory. Oh no, I found one of these yesterday. I didn't film it because it was broken. And it's another one, it's broken. I have no idea how they even get this broken. These little solid porcelain penny dolls and pudding dolls are really sturdy. So I have no idea how they end up so broken like that. Unless someone's bit them. <sighs> They've been baked in a cake. Yeah, it's got no legs or no head, but I'm gonna keep it anyway because we've got a collection of broken ones. For some reason. <laughs> For some reason we do. So I'm gonna keep it. Found this receipt. Um, and it's a McDonald's receipt from yesterday. So uh, <laughs> I think whoever was digging right here brought a McDonald's to the tip to eat for their bait. So that's quite funny. Who is this looking at me? Why, well, it looks like it's John Morley, whoever he was. <laughs> Whoever he was, someone saw fit to commemorate him on... Looks like it was a jug or a big mug. Some bits of it here, the body that this was left with. Oh, look, he's leaning nonchalantly on his hand. <laughs> Hello, John. I'm not going to take it, but I will look it up. See who John Morley was. This was um, a hall that was here the other week, but they've kind of like filled it back in. But I found this bottle. And look, it has gold paint in it. Just there. It's got liquid inside of it. Can you see that? Still got the gold paint in it. We found these bottles before um, with embossing on, but this one is a plain one, unfortunately. I wonder if that's the original no it's floating on top so water must have got in i'll leave that behind i can see something down here and i suspect it oh yes look it's a morning button it would have had a brass loop on and it's got a name on it that i can look up can't quite make it out right now. But look at that, French jet. That should clean up really nicely. That is a lovely find. That will go great in our collection. Pipe ball. Oh, yes. It's in good nick. And interestingly, look, it's got the little teeth marks in it. See that there? And this one is like sideways. They've been holding it in their mouth like that. Like on an angle. I suppose on, on an angle, so it'll be out of their way, out the way of the line of vision. So maybe it's someone who was looking down while they worked. If it was on an angle, someone who was looking down at something while they were working. Interesting little observation, I think. Okay, this is a new hole. <laughs> yeah, look, fresh hole, fresh digging. Look, big. Um, and it's usually actually better, not just after it's dug, but after there's been some rain and there hasn't been any rain for quite a while, actually. So we're still hoping for some. It's a blue cat. That's weird.
just spotted something down here. And it's a clay marble. A plain one yet again. One day I will find a patterned one. Oh look and here's another one. It's glazed this one. Still plain though. It's quite a nice colour actually. It's coming out as yellow on the screen but it's kind of pink. I think. It's getting dark slowly but look at that. It's like, yeah look. It's the end of a really fancy, super fancy like spoon or fork or something. Look at that. What a perfect find for making something out of jewellery. Definitely take that. This bottle's unusual. I mean it initially looks like it's broken on top look. But that's not broken. It's supposed to be like that because this is what is called a burst lip bottle. But the weird thing is that it's actually made from clear glass. That is extremely unusual because they're usually aqua coloured. So they're usually like the colour of this bottle or even darker. So that's very strange. I've never seen a clear burst lip before. So I'm going to keep hold of that actually. So I've just picked these two things up. There's a gem there in a copper bezel. And this looks like a little white cabochon. So two gemmy things. Might be able to do something with them. Might have to just get the gem out of there, whatever it is. Hmm, cool. There's a bit of doll down here. And it's an ear, it's just an ear. It's an odd discovery here. So I saw this little um, porcelain thing. And then I noticed on that rock down there, the end of it, and look, we put them together and it's a complete salt shovel. How funny is that? The both of the pieces just so happen to be here, look. I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna glue it together. <laughs> the chances of finding both halves, that's crazy. There's something poking out here. Oh my goodness, <laughs> it's an ear. Another ear. Two ears. Blossoms! And here they all are. Our finds all washed and presented on the table for you to have another look at. Yeah. Oh, and um, our cat Bosoms is in the window there as well. Yeah, she's come to have a look. Um, but anyway, we thought we'll talk about a few things that we didn't get a chance to mention. So we'll start with this comb which actually relates to um our best find so far this year this beautiful morning necklace and it may have been made by the same company and i think mum explained that these combs were made for soldiers in the american civil war, war weren't they yeah a lot of them were exported over there at the time but yeah. they were of course made for 
the domestic market. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they're made in Scotland. And what was it? The, I can't remember the name of the company. I think it's a Scottish... Vulcanite... Uh, rubber company Vulcanized or rubber like company, yes. But it's in the last video with the uh, neck... Well, the video with the necklace in it. Yeah. And it's funny because we're, we're finding some strange Vulcanite things, aren't we? And we've yeah, got, we uh, of course, this. Yeah. Which um, you'll recognise what that is nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what else have we got? Okay, so we've got another beautiful... Oh, yeah. Glass, black glass, well, French jet morning button. Oh, that's beautiful, yeah. For our larger morning button collection. And, um, oh, yeah, we're going to... this. We haven't had a chance to glue this, but we're going to glue that back together, that little salt shovel, which is really cool. And this spoon handle... Oh, the sun's just gone. <laughs> but it cleaned up beautifully, didn't it? Look at that. Yeah. That um, will make an interesting piece of jewellery. Oh, it will. Yeah, yeah, that's that's why we took it, so that's cool. And the other thing I'd like to mention... Yes? Is this little blue <laughs> bottle here. Oh, yeah. We often find little blue bottles, and this one, coincidentally, I have just found one online, and it has red opium on the label. Oh. So it's a little poison bottle, and a lot of the poisons were kept in blue bottles to yeah. warn people that they were poisoned. But, of course, in the dark... Poison could, you know, the colour couldn't be recognised in the yes. dark, so that's why they started making them ribbed and hobnailed and all sorts of things. And it looks beautiful in the window there, look, with the meat juice. Look at the reflection, isn't it beautiful? The reflections they Aren't made. Aren't they lovely? The refractions, Actually, rather. We've got another project to do. Oh, yeah. Re refractions. Re reflect refractions? Reflections. Okay, <laughs> anyway, well, the, we don't want to talk too much, but it's so easy to get carried away, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it, Bosoms? Okay, I fi the final thing I wanted to mention is this um, little boy spending a penny. And it's strange because I just so happen to have a few things related to that. So I bought this a little while ago because I thought it was quite interesting. It's a, like a bath toy. So there would have been a rubber bulb on the head and you would have like squeezed it, sucked in the water and then squirted it out. And of course, it would appear that the little boy was... Um, Peeing. Yeah. <laughs> so um, it's a bit of a strange motif that was really popular um, because I also have this little charm of a little boy. And that came with something else well. you bought. Yeah, this was this came with another charm that I wanted, um, and I was like, "That's a bit weird." Um, so it's a bit strange, but I've actually got some kind of strange collection going on here that wasn't yeah. I wasn't meant to. <laughs> We'd love to know why so many of these things were made. Yeah, of a boy peeing. If anyone has any clue as we, to the origins of this strange phenomena, we'd we'd yeah. love to know. We haven't had a chance to look it up, but I have a feeling it dates back to Rome or Greece or something yeah, like that. Probably. It's probably some kind of ancient thing. But yeah, that's another one that I actually think... Because look at the rim around the, the head. Do you see that? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's similar to this one. Yeah, so I'm wondering if yeah. that was like a, a sort of a tin, a mini tin one of those and it had a bulb on the head. Hmm, I wonder if it's a... Like some um, kind of like toy... Yeah, maybe it's a Cracker Jack toy yeah. or a Christmas Cracker toy, something like that. Yeah, but strange a strange motif that seemed to be popular then. Yeah. Um, and we, I think we said that lastly, but I think the final thing we want to mention just briefly is probably the most har one of the most harrowing stories that we've actually ever had yes, to tell. Yes, so it's a bit of a serious theme to this video. Yeah. But, you know, it's a story that needs telling. And, it is. Um, it hasn't been, you know, the facts haven't been exposed as much as they should have been. No. Um, even to this day. So um, I thought it was an important story to tell. It's, it's such a shame. And I was thinking there should be some sort of memorial set up, I think. Yeah. For all the children that died, you know, yeah. thanks to this stuff. But there isn't. There isn't anything out there. No. You know. But anyway, on that quite sad note, I think we'll leave it there. 
Okay, so we've been on two different tips in the last two days. Um, and we weren't expecting to find anything because we've been to these tips quite recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we usually leave a bit of a gap before we go again um, because there's not much mm. being disturbed. But surprisingly, we did actually find a few things because yeah, we, we did, did a bit of digging and we found a, a few interesting bits and bobs, didn't we? Yeah, you've already seen them. We haven't seen them cleaned up oh, yet. I know we say that so every time. you're ahead time. of us. <laughs> we say that every time, but we don't know how interesting or like what stories we've uncovered until we get home and do the research. Research. So um, it's really interesting watching this back. Yeah, so anyway, it has been a good two days, an unexpectedly good two days. <laughs> um, but on that note, we're going to say goodbye and thank you. So um, a great big thank you to everyone who's left a comment down there below, who has subscribed to our channel and liked this video. All those things really help, don't they? Yeah, they do. Terrifically. And also a huge thank you to all of our patrons here on Patreon. And help to keep us going every week. No, month even. Month, yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much. We can't tell you how much we do appreciate it. We do, that. we really do. And everyone who's contributed in any other way by buying us a coffee on Kofi or a super thanks <laughs> or anything really, just leaving a comment. We appreciate everything that you do. We do. And we don't do. forget to go over to our Instagram accounts um, because we have a lot of extra content over we there do, as well. Yeah, we post a lot of extra information that we can't always fit in the video as well. Yeah, so. so that's in the description. So all that's left to say now is goodbye and we'll see you again next, next week. week. Bye! Bye.